Yes, welcome to this special moment. Today, to make this special moment, we have our special guest and we are going to discuss on Buddhism. And he is in our studio. We have Dodin Terry. He is a Buddhist scholar from Bonn University and he is from Germany. Let me welcome him. Welcome to Nepal. Welcome to our studio. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Is this your first time to Nepal? Oh, no, this is not my first time to Nepal. I've been uh, coming to Nepal for two decades now, mm -hmm. more, more than 20 years, yes. Coming and going at least once a year. So I cannot say I'm new to Nepal. What differences did you find? 20 years is a long time in a, a person's life and a country's life as well. Um, uh, there have been a lot of changes, mm -hmm. a lot of changes. Buddhism in Germany, since you have been you are a Buddhist scholar and you have been doing lots of research in Buddhism. Mm -hmm. Buddhism in Germany, how do you visualize? Since Germany is not the Buddhist country. No, it's not the Buddhist country, but Buddhism has been quite successful in the last decades, in mm -hmm. the last, say, since the 1960s particularly, but already during the 20th century, and uh, spreading in, uh, globally, globally. Uh, and of course completely new in, in Western countries and uh, uh, in Germany there has been a big push in the 1980s. Uh, a lot of uh, Buddhist centers have come to exist and uh, of course it is still a relatively small I group. guess only 5% of people are Buddhist in Germany, right? I do not know the exact statistics uh -huh. but I think it will be something mm -hmm. like this. It is clearly a, a very small minority but uh, but uh, you have some prominent people who are Buddhists and uh, Buddhism has a kind of special status mm -hmm. outside Asian countries. It's a kind of very special, I think Westerners have a kind of a particular respect for Buddhism which they may not have in the same way to, to, other, to many other Asian religions. Okay, what kind of uh, respect you are talking about, you are trying to hit? I think I think uh, uh, one thing which strikes uh, Westerners uh, about Buddhism is that we associate religion, and I think that's the way it is really, uh, with uh, as being something kind of irrational, mm -hmm. uh, you know, pure faith, uh, and for materialistic, rational education we get, there is a kind of discrepancy. If you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, but Buddhism has a very, in part at least, has a very rational, logical approach to life and to philosophy mm -hmm. and to religion and, you know, to... Uh, and that is something which I think many, uh, many Westerners are, feel inspired or attracted, you mm -hmm. know, in a broader sense. By your words, can we say that Buddhism tries to give a vision or for the way of life? Uh, yeah, I think, I think what is special about Buddhism is that there is less somebody who comes, a priest, to tell you, you should do that, you should mm -hmm. do that, you should not do that. It's not an almighty God or his priest who come and give you orders, so to say, tell you what's right from wrong. But there is a, uh, ideally at least, even of course not always in practice, but ideally uh, in Buddhism is a way of reflection. You know, you are told uh, you should do this, you should not do that for this and that reason. There is a rationality behind it, you know, uh, 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 explanations which are understandable also rationally. And I think it makes a huge difference. You just say that God won't come and give the orders, mm -hmm. right? That's how it is in so, Christianity, for uh -huh. instance. And in, in that, can we say that this is a philosophy, Buddhism? Well, that is, there is a, uh, that is a question which we will not answer tonight because it's a big question. There's a big, in the research on Buddhism, actually. Mm -hmm. there's a but what your, research, what your research suggests? Mm. Uh, uh, well, let me say first, there is a huge discussion in the, in the Buddhology, in the research uh -huh. on Buddhism, whether Buddhism mm -hmm. is actually really a religion or more philosophy. Philosophy. Actually, we had this discussion in the West already in the 19th century. Mm -hmm. And no, they, you cannot answer with yes and no. You know, so, such complex questions you cannot mm -hmm. answer with yes and no. Uh, but I, you don't need to. Actually, what is important is to say that in comparison with other religions, Buddhism has a more philosophical, rational, uh, a thoughtful approach to many issues, problems of life, and the sense of the meaning of life and all these kind of things. But it, is, it doesn't end with that. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, compassion is a very important thing in Buddhism, at least Mahayana Buddhism. 
and, uh, and also meditation. And these are things which are beyond logics and uh, rationality. So, uh, and actually I think it's the strength of Buddhism that it can balance these three things, you know, this, this kind of uh, compassionate thinking, and this kind of rational, philosophical thinking, ethical thinking. And, the and at, the end, at the end, what really matters is the uh, uh, perfection of mind or spirit or whatever you want to call it. And that is meditation. That is something which, go, which is uh, uh, something which you do. You know, so it I'm, is the combination of these three. These three things, the combination of these three are, are very special to Buddhism. In a way, you find that in most religions as well, but they are very well balanced in Buddhism. Very, very well balanced. That is a very there is in the Christianity as well, there is, it is in the Hinduism as well. So there is a balance in Buddhism. There is a balance in Buddhism which I think is not so present in mo most, most other religions. Most other religions have a much more uh, uh, pure faith-based faith approach, you know? And um, Buddhism has a difference. There's a little bit of that also in Hinduism. Perhaps historically it's a, a Buddhist influence. I don't want to go into this discussion, but there is this discussion. Uh, and uh, uh, so th this is very specific of Buddhism. Now, of course, this is how it is in principle. Human beings are human beings. Whether you have a you know, good ideology, bad ideology... Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, this made you to... Uh, do the research in Buddhism, since you are not the uh, Buddhist origin person, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, uh, when you do b research on Buddhism, there are two levels. Mm -hmm. uh, there's what kind a, of? There's one level on the, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, study of Buddhism as a, as a as a doctrine, as an ideology, yeah, which is what we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. But of course, a religion is also a community, mm -hmm. yeah, and community is people. Mm. Now it doesn't matter how, how high or good or bad or, or low or whatever your religion or your political opinion is or whatever. People are people. What made you to do more depth research, depth study in this Buddhism? Oh, that was pure interest. When I was 12 years old, I came, uh, I, I read a book about Buddhism. I got really very much into it. And uh, at that time we had in France, I was still in France at that time, we had uh, the first uh, Buddhist centers coming up mainly from the Tibetan Vajrayana tradition, mm -hmm. and, uh, which has been very important for the spread of Buddhism in the West, by the way, and not only in the West. And uh, uh, yeah, so I, I started to go to this place and I developed an interest. And simply, when I go, was in age of studying, uh, I was thinking, do you study something like commerce or whatever you can make quick money with? <laughs> or are you more a hot uh, a person who you know want to pursue his interests, and I was this kind of person. So you want you don't want to make a quick money starting I, commerce or something. I'm very happy to make quick money if you give me some. I'll take it. <laughs> don't worry about that. But I mean, what, no. But seriously, what I mean is that uh, I find it more fulfilling to deal with things I'm interested in at the philosophical level, if you want. But also, it's also dealing with people. So as, I was, as I was saying, Buddhism is also a community of people. Mm -hmm. And you get interested so in there's people. There's a two-level two of understanding in Buddhism. So you lie Buddhism. in the next one, right? Yeah. I, I've been in doing, the doctrine part. I, I've been doing a little bit of both, to mm -hmm. be honest. But uh, in Nepal, I've been doing more the community, community. aspect, to be honest. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I came uh, 20 years ago, a little more than 20 years ago, first time, as I said, because I knew there was a vibrant Buddhist mm. Can you please highlight some on that community aspect of Buddhism? Uh, okay. What kind of study you are talking about? Well, uh, it is not like this that when I first came to Nepal, I had the precise idea what I'm looking mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to have a look. You know, I heard about Kathmandu, Nepal, Lumini, Kapil you know, Vastu. Uh, Kapil Vastu, whatever. I've had written, really, been reading about that, you know, mm -hmm. when I first came to Nepal already for almost uh, 15, 20 years. And you want to see. You know, you want to see. Mm -hmm. And because I came in Nepal at a time where there was, you know, a new political regime, there was a very vibrant press, a lot of NGOs coming up uh, from Buddhist people, you know, from Sherpa people, Tamang people, Guru, and whatever. Uh, I got into it, and I got a lot of many friends from this uh, among these people, and and these friendships have held on, and that's how I got interested in current development in Buddhist communities. Uh, you know, this is life. What kind of development do you see? Well, uh, in this is twenty years. You mean? Mm -hmm. 
among the Buddhist community? I think, I think 20 years ago there was a huge enthusiasm. Uh, I, everything is going to get mm -hmm. well and better and everything will be fine and you know. And then of course, as it, as it always is everywhere, there is of course a certain disillusion, uh, disillusion because things don't, plans don't always go, you know, realize the way you want and then, you know, every country has this, its political and social problems. You said before 20 years, it was beautiful. But now we are going backward, can we say that? Or not? Even, even if I thought that, I would not be so direct, <laughs> to be honest. But no, but honestly, uh, no, things evolve, things evolve. I would not say you go backward. Of course, some things move in the right direction, definitely, some, definitely. something don't, yeah, something yeah, don't. Yeah. Uh, uh, certainly, I think in terms of the establishment of Buddhism as a social force, for instance, within the political scene in Nepal, there have been big progress. Mm -hmm. There have been big progress. I mean, the last CA, for instance, you had a lot of Buddhists. Constitutional Assembly members. Yeah, yeah, in the parliament, you know, yeah. you had a lot of Buddhists. Comp uh, when I came first to Nepal 20 years ago, I think there was not even a single one. Mm -hmm. Maybe two, three, you know. So that is progress. I mean, I know that Nepali people complain about things not moving up. Um, progressing. Progressing. Mm -hmm. far. And I understand that, of course, it is true. It, ideally, it would move forward <laughs> a little bit further. Uh -huh. Faster, but you know, uh, uh, that's the way it is, and you have to cope with it. I mean, what, what, what I want to say is, you should always never, you should never be satisfied with yourself. You can always do better, and there are certainly a lot of things which can, be be which can get better. Can you please highlight on the importance of Buddhism, mm -hmm. the lesson taught by the Buddhist Buddha mm -hmm. in the politics? Okay, well, that's two different things. Uh, uh, the important... The teachings of Buddha are not concerned in the first place with politics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's concerned with some higher level of human being. That is totally different. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, if you read the sutras, you need to, and if you read the the, 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 the sutras, so the discourse the of the Buddha, of the Buddha, of the Buddha. Yeah, the sermons, mm -hmm. you will find a lot of lessons which are applicable in ethics and hence in politics. Can you please highlight some? I've heard about King Bimbisara, which was kind of, of a sponsor of Buddhism, Buddhism. in the, in the time of Buddhism. Mm. So there were discussions between uh, Buddha and Bimbisara mm. about, you know, how a king should ah. act to, to, to the people, you know, the king should, you know, be good towards the people and, and you know, these kind of things. So you can find these kind of quotes in, in, in Buddhist text uh, a lot and I, I think this is very useful uh, advice for politics. But, as I said before, uh, Buddhism is also a community. So from the point of view of community, uh, um, Buddhist people, you know, whether you are, I don't know, Manangi or... or Mustangi or, or, or... Mustangi, whatever, yeah, you know. Yeah, there, there, there are lots. Uh, 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 people born as Buddhists, uh, uh, Buddhism is part of their culture. Yeah? Buddhism is part of their culture and Buddhism and their culture uh, uh, you know, Nepal is a big mosaic mm -hmm. of very many different people. This is very special about Nepal. Actually, it's very attractive about Nepal. But of course, it also creates some problems, mm -hmm. and these problems have to be, you know, dealt with. And if you deal with Buddhism in Nepal, you deal with, you deal with Buddhist people, you cannot avoid seeing this problem mm -hmm. these issues. Mm -hmm. Now, as a as a somebody who is not from Nepal, as a foreigner, I think it's my duty to take a little bit distance about distance that. Distance on that, definitely. Uh, I do understand <laughs> that. But one thing. We Nepalese time and again have to prove that Buddha was born in Lumini, yeah. Buddha was born in yeah. Nepal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a big issue. Actually, I was just on a conference in, in India some two, three weeks ago. International conference yeah, in that, India, right? Yeah, there's a, a conference which was busy with creating a, a, an organization called International Buddhist Comfort, uh, uh, in International Buddhist Confederation. Uh -huh. Yeah which is uh, an attempt to bring all, you know, the Buddhist world is very, very anarchic, mm -hmm. which is somehow sympathetic, you know, a lot of different schools, a lot of different monasteries, and they're very autonomous. And that's been from the start in, in already in Buddha's time, it was like mm -hmm. there are different mm -hmm. communities, mm -hmm. there are their own rules, etc., etc. So it's kind of a very colorful uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, community, which is very sympathetic, which created a lot of diversity, which is great. But of course, sometimes you have to get your things together. Mm -hmm. 
And, you India know, and Nepal, let's say. For instance, you know, mm -hmm. Indian uh, Buddhist, Chinese Buddhist, Nepali Buddhist, whatever, Japanese. Everyone. Buddhist. You know, you have to bring people together and discuss and decide things together. And I think this, if I understood well, this organization, IBC, International Buddhist Confederation, is an attempt to do exactly that. Now, uh, now there was a discussion at that conference, and the discussion is not new, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, about the birthplace of Buddha. It is often said, uh, you know, in magazines or whatever, that Buddha was born in India, and uh, many uh, Nepali people feel hard about that. Yeah. Of course, B Buddha was born in Lumini, even though we, as foreigners, it is may maybe not a big issue, but we have to understand for Nepali Buddhists, it is a big issue. So this thing has to be clarified. Now, of course, you there's also a danger of o overdoing it, you know. Mm -hmm. If you clarify too often or too loud, people might, be, might get fed up with what, what do they want. So I think the best way to clarify that is to proactively promote what is Buddhist about Nepal. And uh, one of the, I mean, there's vast Buddhist tradition in Nepal. Uh, there's a Newa Buddhist tradition that's been very Definitely. important historically, even though it's a very yeah. small number mm -hmm. of people, but you know, historically, Ne ne Newa Buddhism has had influence through Tibet, on even in, in uh, places which are nowadays in Siberia, this kind of thing. You know, you, you have to think about that. So, but there is one thing which has to be promoted, certainly, this is Lumini. Uh -huh. Lumini. What is your view on it? How can we develop or how do you visualize the overall development process, the development of the Lumini or let's say the Kapilvastu? Well, uh, my opinion, my personal opinion, my opinion, maybe doesn't matter that much. But of no. course, what you would it like matters. to see, what you would like to see, is a, in the first place, is a dignified development. You don't want Lumbini to be transformed into a Disneyland or something like this. You know, uh, an over commercialization. And there is a danger. By the way, it's not only Lumbini. The other big three big Buddhist pilgrimage sites are in India, as you know. And there is the same danger. You know that people who might not even be Buddhist uh, make big money with, with places where B Buddhist pilgrim, uh, pilgrims come and it has nothing to do with Buddhism. And it's not only in Buddhism, you know, so it's other regions that are the same. Mm -hmm. the same. But I think, I think the, uh, to have a, a, a dignified Lumbini where, where everything is about Buddhism and not about commerce is very important. And there was, uh, you know, this uh, um, Japanese architect Kenzo Tangi developed a plan hmm. in the 70s for the development of Lumini, which I think was very good and I think is a good basis. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. I think uh, we have to wrap up our show because we are running out of time. Thank okay. you so much for your wonderful, your valuable opinions. Mm -hmm. I was happy to come and see you. Thank you so much for your time and yes, we have to say that Buddha was born in Nepal. Thank you so much. Keep watching Himalaya Television. Namaste.